There are 19 million war veterans living in the United States today, but every day we lose 1,500 of them. Motivated by a desire to honor our nation's war veterans for their service and to collect their stories and experiences while they are still among us, the United States Congress has created the Veterans History Project. This project covers World War I, World War II, and the Korean, Vietnam, and Persian Gulf Wars. It includes all participants in those wars, men and women, civilian and military. It documents all ranks from all branches of service, the Air Force, Army, Marine Corps, and Navy, as well as the U.S. Coast Guard and Merchant Marine. Hello, and welcome to the Veterans History Project. I'm your host, Mike Vanderpool. My guest today is Mr. William Doggett, born on May 22, 1926, and currently living in Commerce, Michigan. Welcome to the program today, Bill. Well, thank you. Thank you for Good being to be here. here. Uh, which branch of the military were you involved in? I was in the Navy, Navy Reserve, they call it. And were, did you enlist or were you drafted? Well, I enlisted in Chicago, Illinois when I was 17 years old and I was able to complete my high school and then the Monday after I graduated from high school I took off on a train for Jacksonville, Florida to boot camp. And what was going on at, at that time? Which Was it World War II that we yes, involved with? Yes, this was in World War II, 1944, just after Eisenhower invaded Europe and I wanted to become a pilot and I had signed up for that but just before I was taken off for Jacksonville why the pilot training was closed and I was put into the combat air crew training. Was it near the end of the war that you enlisted then? Well it was towards the end about a year, year and a month before the war ended. Yeah. What made you want to enlist? Well, my dad had been in the Navy during World War I, and also when I was 15, I joined the Sea Scouts, part of the regular Boy Scouts in Chicago, and I was lucky enough to be in a good group that would take off from Belmont Harbor in Chicago and go out into Lake Michigan in a huge whale boat with about 12 of us rowing and we just had uh, you know we coordinated had a good time and it got me into the idea of the Navy. The white hat that we wore had a little symbol on the front and it was about I guess 50 cents at that time to go to the movies so we would turn our hats around with our uniforms on and we looked just like a sailor and got in for 10 cents. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad deal. No, it wasn't. Did you have any other uh, any other friends or, or family who were involved in the in the war effort? Yeah, I played uh, football in my senior year in high school, and uh, some of the guys were so eager that as soon as the football season was o over, they enlisted, and some of them got into the Marines and didn't make it back. They got into some of the middle. Pacific battles and a guy by the name of Turk Sargis and uh, Torsty Albeck, uh, guys I played football with, they just, they were killed and it was kind of devastating. But still the war was on and uh, I either had to get drafted or enlist, so I decided to enlist. Uh, do you remember where you were when Pearl Harbor was bombed? Yeah, I was with my aunt and uncle, my mother and dad, and we had driven downtown in Chicago to Marshall Fields mm -hmm. so that we could see the Christmas decorations in the windows on State Street. And on the way back, my uncle had a pretty fancy Oldsmobile for 1941, and it had, of course, a radio and automatic shift on it, and also all of a sudden the news came over about Pearl Harbor. But it, you know, we had had, there was such a background going back three or four years. I can remember as a 13-year-old 
and a 12 year old, the uh, baseball cards and the Indian cards changed to war cards, all about the Japanese and what they were doing over in China and the sinking of a, a U.S. gunboat on the Yangtze River at the USS Panay. And it just, and it kind of, there was kind of a buildup. We'd go to the show every Saturday afternoon and the Pathé News would be on and there'd be something about the buildup to the war. So then even at a young age you were pretty pretty yeah. conscious about what was yeah. going on? I remember in particular the summer of 1939 why well, I, I worked as a newsboy at the corner of Clark and Granville on the north side of Chicago. And whenever there was an extra that came out, because this is the time, 39 is when Hitler was really moving about in Europe. And I can remember sitting on the front porch, screened in porch, and hearing the newsboys come yelling, you know, extra, extra, Hitler takes the Sudetenland, Sudetenland taken. And it was probably, I don't know, 35 years later that I wrote a poem about it. It's called City Summer of 39. A soft summer stillness under arching elms, a porch of screened wicker ending at a swaying swing. Talk of the day and of ourselves, the street lights pale through grapevine leaves the creaking screen door opens to the sound of extra, extra, Hitler takes the Sudetenland. The door slams and rattles the screen panel right to the rear of the gently sw swaying swing. Complaten smugness is gone. And that was kind of my initiation into the lead up to December of 1941. Do you remember what you were what you were feeling at the time when you wrote that poem? Yeah, we we had a unique spot where we lived on the north side of Chicago. The Granville Avenue ran east and west. We were about three more quarters of a mile from Lake Michigan. And there was the we were in a tunnel of leaves all the way down to the lake. And at certain times of the day there'd be a stillness from all of the traffic of the automobiles and the streetcars. And I lived a, just a half a block from Northwestern train station, so we always had the trains going by. And, and it was just that evening stuck in my mind because of the stillness and how everything was so nice and quiet there on the porch. And then extra, extra, and that kind of set the tone for my build up to World War II for the US. Looking looking back at the poem now, what what are your feelings about it? Have you shared it with a lot of people? Yeah, I took a class in uh, writing at OCC a couple of years ago and I shared it with the class a couple of times there and then with the family. And we had a unique experience with our grandchildren. We had a place up north and a big loft upstairs where we would all get together at night when the kids were small and getting ready for bed. And we'd talk about, my wife and I would talk about our childhood and we'd talk about before World War II and during the war and all that. So 